and we'll be looking at some more transfer functions and stability by looking at the poles of the system. So before we did a really simple example, and now we're going to move to a little bit more complicated examples. So this is a, an example of after you've modeled your system, you may have something like this. And I want to make a note about the form that we have here. Here we have a system with S2, the 1, so the first order system in the numerator, and this is a second order in the denominator. In almost all the systems we'll be working with, we have the, the order of the denominator is higher than that of the numerator. And we call that a strict, strictly proper transfer function, and we'll be dealing almost always with those types of systems. And we have, when we have those systems, we can make some generalizations. And one of them is that if all the poles are negative, then we know the system is stable. So we're going to break the system down. I'm going to show you why this is stable when it has all negative poles. So let's just attack this problem the way we would. So what we learned recently is about figuring out the poles and the zeros. So first, we want to actually factor this denominator. So if we look at this, we see that this does factor very nicely. So we'll write still here s plus 2, the numerator. And in the denominator, we'll write, well, we see s plus 3 and s times s plus 1. If we break that down, distribute that, we would get these the same expression. So from here, once everything's factored, we can easily see what our poles and zeros are. So first, let's write our zeros. Well, we only have one. So our pole here is negative 2. Sorry. Our zero here is negative two. And here we're gonna have two poles. And our poles would be a negative three and a negative one. Because those either of those values will make the denominator zero, which makes the transfer function go to infinity. Okay, so negative one here. And just for review, let's plot this. Plot this on our We'll make a pole zero plot here. And again, here's the real, and here's the imaginary. These all happen to be real, so they will just be on the real axis. So let's say we'll just do one, two, three here. One, two, three. So this is three, negative one, negative two, negative three. And so our zero is negative two, so we can draw a circle at that point, our zero. Then we have a pole at negative 1 and negative 3. So here you can stop and say, OK, well, our poles are both negative, and therefore the system is stable. But why exactly is that? Let's look a little bit further at this problem. Well, we have this, but if you look at this, you might not initially recognize what that means in the time domain. But what we can do is break that, this expression apart. Just rewriting this here. Well, we can do our partial fraction expansion. And we have A, we'll do S plus 1 here. And B, some value, we have to figure out what that value is, S plus 3. So if we do our partial uh, expansion, partial fraction expansion here, we can figure out what A and B are and plug them in. So let's just do that real quick. So if we look at the numerators, we would have S plus 2 equal to a times this, so a s plus 3, and then b times this value, so b s plus 1. And now we have, we can separate the s values and the just constant values. So this becomes, we have a 1s here, equals a s plus b s. That's one expression. And looking at the constants here, we have 2 equals 3a plus 1b. So if we rewrite this expression, so we'll do it here, we'll do b is equal to 2 minus 3a. And we'll take that and plug it into here. And we'll get 1 equals a plus 2 minus 3a. Solve, move all these things around. 
get negative 1 here if we move the 2 over. Add these together, we'll get negative 2a. Divide, and we get a is equal to 1 half. Okay, there's our value for a. Plug that back into here. 2 minus 3 over 2, and that also yields a 1 half. Great, so we found our values here happen to both be one half, we can plug them back into here, and we know that these expressions are equal. One half here, and one half here. So, we'll just erase this. This should be review. So now we have, we've broken our fraction apart. And if you remember from last time, we look at this, we take the reverse Laplace transform, it should be a familiar exponential, and I'll just write it here, because I always forget it too. So say we have a constant at the top, s plus little a here, if we take the reverse Laplace, and I'm going to go ahead and assume, assume zero initial conditions, then we know that this is exactly e equals negative, oh sorry, a times e equals negative a t. Okay, so we see that this is in the same form. So we can take, do the same thing here. We're gonna call this f of t. We're gonna take the reverse Laplace and assume zero initial conditions. And we can transform that here. So we'll get one half. This time our a is one, so e to the negative one t plus one half. E, this time it's negative 3, so it's going to be negative 3t here. So this is what our function looks like in the time domain. And just for completeness, so if we look at this expression, it would start at, say this is call this 1, we'll call this 1 half. It would start at 1 half and then, you know, decay exponentially towards 0. And of course, this is t and f of x of t. And we'll look at the other one, right? So if we just plot this, it would also start at 1 half, but it's decaying more rapidly, so it would decay faster than the other one towards 0. And the sum would simply be adding them together, so starting at 1 and decaying at some, you know, rate down here. The, pretend that that's a better drawing. Right. Okay, but anyway, you can see that this expression, the sum of these two exponentials, also decays to zero. So since this expression, of t, a system goes to zero as t goes to infinity, we know that the system is stable. So if we have a proper transfer function and we have all negative poles, we will simply get a bunch of negatives, uh, exponential here, sorry, real exp negative poles, then they will all go like this and as time goes to infinity, the system will go to zero and it is stable. So that's why when we have this kind of system and we have all negative real poles, we can say that the system is stable. Next, we'll look at a case where we are actually looking at imaginary ones.